Hello, everyone, and welcome into Coach Craig's Sports. This is the NFL DFS player pool video for week number nine, if you're joining me for the very first time. First of all, welcome in. Second of all, this is how this week's video will be structured. I'll be going over my player pools for both DraftKings and Fandle, kind of talking through each player at each position. So this is just my general player pool. If you want to play certain stacks, go right ahead and do it. If you like a player that's not in my player pool, feel free to use it at the same time as well. I will also be having my cheat sheets come out on Facebook, on Twitter, and on the YouTube community tab which is just a condensed version of these player pools. So definitely be sure to check those out as well. But without further ado, we'll get into a DraftKings side. We'll start off with the quarterback position. We're going to go right to Lamar Jackson, $8,000 going against Denver Broncos. So a little bit tougher matchup. Broncos have been decent on defense so far this season, but he does have an extra weapon this week in Deontay Johnson. We'll see how much he plays. We'll see how involved he is in the offense overall, but definitely do like the upside that Lamar Jackson can have on any given slate. Then we move down. Jalen Hurts coming off a big week, $7,800. Goes against Jacksonville Jaguars, a very favorable matchup for quarterbacks and wide receivers so far this season. Would expect that to continue once again this week. Moving down to Jane Daniels, $7,500. He's up there in price tag now at this point in time. Goes against the Giants defense that, you know, isn't the greatest overall. So do like his upside once again this week. Obviously still dealing with that rib issue. So maybe it limits his upside just a little bit. Then we move down to Kirk Cousins, $6,400. He goes against the Dallas Cowboys. Has a really banged up defense at this point in time. Trevon Diggs may or may not play. Deron Bland was activated off IR, but he's not going to be able to play in this game. So secondary pretty banged up at this point in time. Pass rush pretty banged up at this point in time as well. And then we move down to Jameis Winston, $5,400, coming off a really strong performance versus the Baltimore Ravens. And he goes against a Chargers team that's essentially rolling out a whole bunch of backup quarterbacks, so should be a pretty favorable matchup for him. Obviously, he does have some pretty significant high-end upside at the end of the day. Then we move over to the running back position. We got Derrick Henry at the top, $8,300. Going against Denver Broncos, going to be a little bit of a hit-or-miss matchup, but the upside that Derrick Henry can have on any given slate is definitely warranted. Then we move down to Saquon Barkley, $8,200 going against Jacksonville Jaguars, just a favorable matchup. Barkley has that high-end upset on any given slate at the same time as well. Then we have Kyron Williams, $8,000 going against Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks have been very, very hit or miss against the run. Kyron Williams obviously has a very large workload, scored a touchdown every single week, so it's really hard to go against him at this point in time. Then Alvin Kamara versus the Carolina Panthers, just a really favorable matchup, $7,800. Maybe a little bit more than I like to pay with him, especially with all the injuries got going on right now. But behind him, Jamal Williams and Kendry Miller aren't playing in this game. So it's basically going to be Jordan Mims behind him. They might bring up the other guy they signed back to the practice squad this week. But Alvin Kamara is going to play a big role for the Saints team. It looks like Derek Carr should be back for this game at the same time as well. Then we move down to Bajan Robinson, $7,400 going against Dallas Cowboys. They have no run stuffer at this point in time, so it should be a pretty favorable matchup there. James Cook, $7,200 going against the Miami Dolphins. I like him on DraftKings, not so much on FanDuel. He's a little bit more expensive over there, but don't mind him at $7,200 going against the Miami team that has struggled against the run so far at times this season. And then on the opposite side of that game, we got Devon Achan at $6,700. Bills have kind of struggled against the run so far this year. Achan, all his good games have come with 200 quarterback and that is something to be said, but but definitely do like his upside in that situation. DeAndre Swift, $6,400, going against the Arizona Cardinals. Very young, inexperienced, not that great defensive line, so should have some pretty decent upside there as well. Chase Brown, $5,900, going against the Raiders. Looks like a favorable matchup, and Zach Moss is doubtful for this week. So he definitely has a ton of upside in this scenario, probably a cash game play this week as well. Tyrone Tracy Jr. only at $5,500. Was kind of banged up early in the week. We didn't know if he was going to play, but he has been cleared to play, so he's good to go. Goes against the Washington Commanders this week. Should be a really favorable matchup for him, and he showed really good upside so far this season. And then last but not least, we got Tyler Algier, $4,900, going against that same favorable Dallas Cowboys matchup. So definitely do like him if you want to get a little bit different, if you want to get off of some of that Bajan Robinson chalk that I do expect to be there. Then we move over to the wide receiver position. We start off with C.D. Lamb going against the Atlanta Falcons. I believe C.D. Lamb is still playing primarily out of the slot in three wide receiver sets. Obviously, in two wide receiver sets, it's him and Jalen Tolbert. So in two wide receiver sets, he might get a little bit more A.J. Terrell, who hasn't been quite as good this year. But in those three wide receiver sets, when he goes in the slot, going against D. Alford is going to be a very favorable matchup for him. So I like the upside that could be there for him just in general. Then we have Jamar Chase going against the Las Vegas Raiders, $8,600. Probably going to get like a lot of Jack Jones this week. But ultimately, I'm not too worried about that. And Jamar Chase does have that slate-breaking upside in any given slate. And there is no T. Higgins once again this week. Move down to A.J. Brown, $8,100 going against the Jaguars. We talked about Jalen Hurts. Jaguars have allowed a lot of passing yards, a lot of passing points, and a lot of receiving yards and receiving points so far this season. So quarterback plus wide receiver has been a good combination versus Jacksonville so far this season. 
Amon Ross St. Brown, $7,800 going against the Green Bay Packers, who have been primarily playing Jalen Bullard out of the slot as of late. So could be an interesting matchup there going against the rookie. Obviously, there's been a couple down rakes for Amon Ross St. Brown. So maybe a little bit less attractive than you would be otherwise, but no Jameson Williams at this point in time. So it's going to be mainly him and Sam Laporta in that passing game once again. Moved down to Malik Neighbors, $7,500, one of the best matchups against the Washington Commanders. Obviously, he had a very strong start to the season, got a little bit banged up, come back now, so he should be good to go, $7,500. Got Terry McLaurin, $7,100, going against the Giants, opposite side of the game. He definitely does have some high-end upside, number one target for Jane Daniels once again. Drake London's down to $6,700 this week, going against the Dallas Cowboys secondary that is very, very banged up and potentially depleted this week. Could be a really favorable matchup for him just in general. DJ Moore, $6,500. Really liked him last week. Didn't really pay off in that regard, but going against the Arizona Cardinals, still a lot of upside that could be had there as well. Chris Olave coming off a pretty strong week. $6,100 goes against the Panthers. Should be a favorable matchup. Plus, getting Derek Carr back this week should help him out a little bit too, especially with all the other wide receiver options kind of missing at this point in time. And then we have Darnell Mooney, $6,000, going against the depleted Cowboys defense as well. Whether you want to play him, whether you want to play Drake London, whether you want to play both alongside Kirk Cousins, a lot of different ways that you can go about that. Falcons just look like a really good team this week overall. Then we move down to Keenan Allen, going against Garrett Williams in the slot for the Arizona Cardinals, $5,500. Definitely do like his upside. Played the most snaps that he has all season last week. Then we have Christian Watson, $5,000, going against the Detroit Lions. If he gets deep on a long pass, if he scores a touchdown, he's going to look pretty good overall. So like his upside just in general, in a pretty favorable matchup. Then we move down to Darius Slayton, $4,800. Kind of a good contrarian play this week going against the Washington Commanders team. You know, everybody's probably flocking to Malik Neighbors. $4,800, not a bad price tag. If you can get a couple targets out of him, a couple deep shots, could definitely pay off at this price tag. Then we have Cedric Tillman, $4,300, a back-to-back strong performances. Goes against that Chargers team that is missing pretty much all their cornerbacks at this point in time. So he is by far an easy cash game play this week. Do expect a lot of ownership to be going to him. And then beyond him, everybody else is kind of dark throws down here. Jalen Coker, $3,600. Played a pretty significant role for this Panthers team so far. No Deontay Johnson now. Going against a banged-up secondary for the Saints. Paulson Adibos on IR. Marshawn Lattimore is going to be out this week. So could be a pretty favorable matchup just in general. Then we move down to Parker Washington, $3,600. Filling in for Christian Kirk, who's out for the foreseeable future and potentially the season. Goes against the Eagles. Kind of a hit-or-miss matchup there, but... If Gabe Davis, if Brian Thomas Jr., who are both questionable, end up missing this game, if one of them does, obviously looks a little bit better for him just in general. Nick Westbrook Aquina stepping in in place for DeAndre Hopkins last week, $3,500. Had a decent week, you know, so he's kind of a decent pump play here if he can get double digit points out. Don't love the matchup versus the Patriots, but at the same time, you know, if Tyler Boyd ends up missing this game, could be some additional targets to go around as well. And then last but not least, we got Jake Bobo, $3,400, playing in place of DK Metcalf. Goes against the Rams secondary, not the greatest at this point in time. If he ultimately ends up scoring a touchdown, could pay off in a pretty big way this week overall. Then we move over to the tight end position. We got Brock Bowers, $6,000. Goes against the Cincinnati Bengals. Clear number one target for this Raiders team once again. Bengals actually haven't been that great versus tight ends this season, so should be a really favorable matchup for him once again. Then we move down to Trey McBride, $5,800. Going against the Bears. He is the number one or two target for Kyler Murray at this point in time. Like the target volume that could be there if he gets in the end zone. Could ultimately pay off in a pretty big way. David Njoku, $5,500. Him and Cedric Tillman are going to be the main two guys for this Browns team once again. And going against the Chargers, I do definitely like the matchup as well. Then we move down to Evan Ingram, $5,300. Goes against the Eagles, who I'm not too afraid of their linebacker unit. You know, maybe throw a safety on them or something at that point in time. But... Evan Ingram could potentially be the number one target for Trevor Lawrence this week overall, especially with no Christian Kirk and Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas Jr. banged up at this point in time. Moving down to Kyle Pitts, who's played really well as of late. $4,900 goes against an attractive matchup with the Dallas Cowboys. If you want to play him solo, if you want to stack him with Kirk Cousins, have no problem doing that whatsoever. Then we have Sam Laporta, $4,800. I really like this price tag. Number two target for Jared Goff at this point in time with no Jameson Williams there. Should benefit him in a pretty big way. Goes against the Green Bay Packers, who have kind of been hit or miss first tight end so far this season. Then we move down to Zach Ertz. Definitely like the matchup versus the New York Giants. Playing really well as of late, $4,300. Definitely do like his upside. And then Mark Andrews, only $4,200. People kind of forget about him, but he's played really well as of late. Goes against the Denver Broncos. Should be a favorable matchup for him. And then last but not least, we got our punt play down here in A.J. Barner, $2,600. No offense out this week. Goes against the Rams that have struggled mightily against the tight end position so far this season. If he gets a couple targets, if he gets a couple catches, if he gets in the end zone, it's not too hard to pay off at this price tag overall. 
And then last but not least, we move over to the defenses. And before I get too far into it, I'm going to say it's not the greatest week for defenses for DFS this week. But we're going to start off with the Saints going against the Carolina Panthers. Not a lot of firepower left for this Panthers team at this point in time. We'll see whether it's Andy Dalton or Bryce Young starting at quarterback. I don't believe that announcement has officially been made at the time of the recording of this video. Then we got the Bengals going against the Raiders. Raiders don't have much on offense at this point in time. Bengals defense hasn't been that good, so we'll see how that works out. The Saints were $3,800. Bengals were $3,700. I think I forgot to mention that when I was talking about the Saints. And then we move down to the Titans. $3,200 going against the Patriots. We'll see whether or not Drake May is back at quarterback this week. I believe he's limited participant in practice all week with that concussion. So that most likely means that he did not clear protocol. But we will have to see as game time does come around. So I would expect Jacoby Brissett to start at quarterback. Obviously, not too afraid of this Patriots offense with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback and the limited options that they do have. On the opposite end of the game, you can play the Patriots, $3,000. Going against the Tennessee Titans, we'll see whether Will Levis is back from his shoulder injury this week or not. He's technically listed as questionable. Otherwise, you're going to get Mason Rudolph. Either way, it should be pretty favorable. And then last but not least, the punt play that I threw down here, Carolina Panthers, $2,400. No, their defense is not good. But, you know, the Saints, if Derek Carr struggles in his return, if he gets knocked out of the game or something like that, there could be a little bit of upside to be had there at the same time as well. But a pretty big risk at that. But with that being said, that's what I do have in terms of my player pool for DraftKings. We'll get moved over to Fandle and talk about my player pool over there as well. So on the Fandle side, I'm going to start off by saying there's going to be a lot of repetition here just in general. So keep that in mind. Obviously on Fandle, we have the Sunday Night Football game as well. But we're going to start off at the quarterback position. We got Jalen Hurts, $9,300 going against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like I mentioned on DraftKings, Jaguars have really struggled against quarterbacks and pass catchers so far this season so do expect that trend to continue definitely like the upside that Jalen Hurts has and he's also coming off a really strong performance in week number eight then we move down to Lamar Jackson $8,900 tougher matchup versus that Broncos defense but like the upside that he can have on any given slate Jane Daniels next up at $8,700 going against the Giants Giants I'm not too afraid of their defense at this point in time Jane Daniels obviously a little bit banged up with that rib injury still but definitely do like his upside then we move down to Gerald Burrow $7,900 didn't have him on DraftKings but I do on Fandle for this price tag I do like it versus that Raiders defense. If you really want to play him on DraftKings, you can definitely feel free to do that as well. Then we move down to Sam Darnold. Sunday night football game goes against the Colts. Colts secondary hasn't been the greatest so far this year. Like Sam Darnold's kind of a pay down option at $7,500. Kirk Cousins also at $7,500 versus that Dallas Cowboys defense. Really banged up at this point in time. Definitely do like his upside. And then last but not least, we got Jameis Winston, $7,000. Going against the Chargers, very banged up cornerback unit. So do expect Jameis Winston to be a pretty good play once again this week. Then we move over to the running back position. We got Saquon Barkley, $9,400. Going against Jacksonville Jaguars, should be a pretty decent matchup. Obviously, we know the type of upside that Saquon Barkley can have on any given slate. Then we move down to Derrick Henry, $9,000. Going against the Denver Broncos, not the greatest matchup in the world, but obviously Derrick Henry does have really strong upside on any given slate at the same time as well. Kyron Williams, $8,900. Going against Seattle Seahawks, who have been pretty hit or miss for the running back position so far this season. Kyron Williams scored a touchdown every single game. Obviously, he has a large workload, so definitely like his upside once again. Then we move down to Alvin Kamara, really banged up at this point in time, but the running backs behind him, Jamal Williams, and Kendra Miller are not going to be playing in this game, so it's probably just going to be Jordan Mims, and I believe the other guy that they signed back to the practice squad this week probably elevated as well behind him, but Alvin Kamara, really favorable matchup versus Carolina Panthers. Definitely do like the potential upside that he could have this week. Moving down to Bajan Robinson, $8,500 going against Dallas Cowboys. They have struggled against the running back position so far this year, so if you want to play Bajan Robinson or Tyler Algier, you can definitely do that. Bajan Robinson, obviously $8,500. Tyler Algier, quite a bit cheaper at $5,600. Then we move down to Devon Achan, $7,800. Every game that he's played with Tua has been really good. The games without Tua have not been so good. Buffalo has been not the greatest versus the running back position so far this year, so definitely do like him in this matchup. And then we got Aaron Jones, $7,500, going against Colts, who have struggled against the running back position so far this season. Aaron Jones got the lion's share of the snaps last week. They essentially made Ty Chandler disappear, so definitely like that potential upside that could be there with him. Yeah, Andrew Swift, $7,200. Probably a little bit more than I like to pay for him, but it is a favorable matchup going against the Arizona Cardinals. Then we get down to our two cheap running backs once again. Chase Brown, $6,300. Zach Moss doubtful this week. And going against the Raiders should be a pretty favorable matchup. And Tyron Tracy Jr., $6,200. Going against the Washington Commanders, whose defense, you know, very hit or miss throughout the season. Should be a really favorable matchup for him. And Tyron Tracy Jr. has really showed out in a pretty big way in his small sample size throughout his rookie season. 
Then we move over to the wide receiver position. We got Jamar Chase, $9,500, going against the Las Vegas Raiders. Probably going to get a lot of Jack Jones this week, but no T. Higgins out there. Do love the upside that Jamar Chase does have for this week overall. Justin Jefferson going against the Colts. Colts, cornerbacks, not that great this season, especially on the outside. So Jefferson looks like a really, really strong play just in general. C.D. Lamb, $9,100, going against the Falcons. Might get some A.J. Terrell, might get some D. Alford. Doesn't really matter too much. Like the upside that he could potentially have this week. But probably like my least favorite of the expensive wide receivers. Then we move down to A.J. Brown, $9,000, going against Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars have struggled against the quarterback and wide receiver position so far throughout the season, allowing a lot of fantasy points to both. So like A.J. Brown quite a bit this week. Amon Ross St. Brown coming off a down week, you know, goes against the Packers this week, $8,600 division rival game. Probably going to be a little bit juiced up for that. No Jameson Williams at this point in time. So probably a couple extra targets to go around at the same time as well. Then we got Malik Neighbors, $8,400. Goes against the Washington Commanders. Should be a pretty favorable matchup there. Like the target upside that he could potentially have in this game. And if this game's back and forth, he's going to look really good overall. Drake London's next up, $7,900 versus the Dallas Cowboys defense that is really banged up, especially at that cornerback unit at this point in time. Then we got Terry McLaurin, $7,400, going against the Giants. Not afraid of the Giants secondary at whatsoever at this point in time. Clear number one target for Jane Daniels, so definitely do like Terry McLaurin once again this week. I feel like I say that every single week. Chris Olave is next, $7,100, going against Terry Allen Panthers. Very favorable matchup. Derek Carr most likely back under center, and not much else in the wide receiver room at this point in time. And then because we have the Sunday night football game, we got Josh Downs here, I'm Michael Pittman Jr. So Josh Downs, $6,900, favorable matchup versus the Minnesota Vikings. He's done really well with Joe Flacco under center. And then if you want to play Michael Pittman Jr. under that same sentiment, Joe Flacco definitely helps him out. And even though Michael Pittman Jr. has been dealing with that back injury in a quite a big way overall. Then we move down to DJ Moore. Really liked him last week. Kind of disappointed us, but still a really favorable matchup versus the Arizona Cardinals this week. Cedric Tillman, $6,100. Still looks like a really solid play in a very favorable matchup versus a Chargers team that is very much hurt in that cornerback unit. So definitely do like him once again and the chemistry he's shown with Jameis Winston so far. Keenan Allen's only $6,000. Favorable matchup versus Gary Williams in the slot. Coming off a season high in terms of snaps. Definitely do like Keenan Allen once again this week. Darius Slayton, kind of my wild card going against that Washington Commanders. Mentioned that over on DraftKings. Kind of a good contrarian play if you want to get there. If he gets a couple deep shots, if, if he does well on his targets, could have some significant upside on this week overall. Then we got Christian Watson behind him, $5,600 if he gets a deep shot versus this Lions team that has allowed some big plays at times this season. Could be a really good week for him overall. And then we got the two cheap Carolina wide receivers and Jalen Coker, $5,200. And David Moore, who operated out of the slot for them last week at $4,500 versus a banged up New Orleans Saints secondary. So they both could be some pretty enticing punt plays on FanDuel for this week overall. Then we were at tight end position. We got Brock Bowers, $7,700. Going against the Cincinnati Bengals, who have struggled against the tight end position so far this season. Brock Bowers, clear number one target for this Raiders team at this point in time. After him, we have David Njoku, who's priced up quite a bit on FanDuel, $7,000, but do like the matchup versus the Chargers, and he appears to be the number two target for Jameis Winston at this point in time. Trey McBride's next up, $6,800. If he gets the target volume once again, if he gets in the end zone, could look pretty good versus Bears team overall. Evan Ingram, $6,400. Going against the Philadelphia Eagles, potential number one target for Trevor Lawrence this week with Christian Kirk out and Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas Jr., both questionable at this point in time. Sam Laporta, who's kind of had the down season so far, $6,300. Favorable matchup versus the Green Bay Packers, who have been hit or miss first tight end so far this season. And no Jamison Williams out there. So I do like the upside that Sam Laporta could have for week number nine. Kyle Pitts, been really strong as of late, $6,000. Goes against the Cowboys, should be a really favorable matchup there. So whether you want to play Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Darnell Mooney, if you want to stack one of them, if you want to stack two of them with Kirk Cousins, definitely does make a lot of sense this week overall. Falcons do look like a really good team to stack just in general then we move down to mark andrews fifty eight hundred dollars still probably too cheap for him at this point in time been playing really well as of late goes against the denver broncos should be a really favorable matchup for him as well then next up we got zach Ertz at fifty three hundred dollars going against the giants number two target for jane daniels once again coming off some pretty solid weeks so i definitely do like him it's kind of a pay down option once again and then we have cole Komet on fandle just at the price tag fifty two hundred dollars could have some upside versus the cardinals however he's a little bit of risk if the targets aren't there this week and then last but not least, we got A.J. Barner, $4,500, so kind of our punt play at tight end. No Noah Fant for the Seattle Seahawks team, and the Rams have really struggled against that tight end position so far this season. And then we move over to defenses. Once again, like I mentioned on DraftKings, not the greatest week overall for defenses. So just kind of pick whoever you want. I wouldn't go chasing anybody that's expected to have too much ownership, but these are the ones that I do have for this week overall. We got the Saints going against Carolina Panthers, $5,000, probably more than I would like to pay personally. Might be Andy Dalton at quarterback, might be Bryce Young. 
once again, at the time of this recording of this video, I don't think they have made an official announcement. And then we got the Titans, $4,700 going against the New England Patriots. Drake May dealing with that concussion. Been limited practice all week. Probably not going to clear concussion protocol, so I would assume Jacoby Brissett gets the start this week. And then we move down to the Bills, who I have on FanDuel, didn't have on DraftKings. $4,300 versus Miami Dolphins. Very risky play here, but there is some upside to be had at the same time as well. Then we got the Bengals, who look a little bit better on FanDuel, if you're being honest, because their defense hasn't been that great this season, but they go against the Raiders, so it's a really favorable matchup. So 4000 seems a little bit more reasonable than the second highest priced defense on DraftKings. And then we got the Patriots at the same price tag of $4,000. Going against the Titans, looks like a really favorable matchup. We'll see if Will Levis is back this week or not. Otherwise, it's going to be Mason Rudolph. Either way, going to be pretty good at quarterback. And I do believe they have quite a few offensive linemen that are banged up at this point in time, the Tennessee Titans team, that is. And then last but not least, the punt play that I have here is the Carolina Panthers. Their defense is not good whatsoever, but they can get a little bit of pressure on Derek Carr if they bang him up a little bit. We'll see how he is in his first game back. And, you know, if he's unable to play after that point in time and go to Jake Hayner, Spencer Rattler looks pretty good at that. But, you know, that Panthers team's not very good either way. So it's a very risky play. But with that being said, that's what I do have in terms of my player pools for both DraftKings and FanDuel for week number nine. As always, if you have any questions related to NFL DFS, be sure to drop them down in the comment section of this video, and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. And then once again, my NFL DFS cheat sheets will be posted up on Facebook. It'll be posted up on Twitter and the YouTube community tab, so definitely look out for that. Just the shortened version of this player pool. My player pool will be up on the Patreon page as well. If there's any updates to it, I'll leave those on there. So definitely be sure to check out Patreon. Very small monthly donation over there. You get NFL DFS content, you get NBA DFS content, you get some fantasy football content. So a lot of useful information just in general. Once again, very small monthly donation over there. But with that being said, if you are brand new to my channel, checking it out for the very first time or have yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. Definitely would appreciate it. Helps to build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports, which is one that's truly for you, the viewers, helping you with your DFS. Right now we have NBA DFS in terms of the court picks Tuesday through Friday. Got my NFL DFS player pool video coming out once a week, typically on Saturdays. And then last but not least, if you're interested in sports betting, if you're interested in prop betting whatsoever, be sure to check out the links and promo codes down in the description below for Parlay Play, BetUS, and Prize Picks. If you're a brand new user on any one of those three sites, when you sign up, make your first deposit, you will get a first match deposit bonus. For Prize Picks and Parlay Play, it's 100% match up to $100. And then for BetUS, it's 125% match up to $2,000. So some pretty great opportunities to be had out there. If you have any other additional questions, related to that whatsoever feel free to reach out to me whether it's down in the comment section of this video or on twitter at coach craig support i'd be more than happy to help you with that journey but with that being said that's all that i truly have for this week's video definitely do appreciate each and every one of you tuning in definitely means a lot to me i hope that each and every one of you have a great rest of your day no matter what day you're watching this on a good weekend overall and some really good luck for nfl dfs for week number nine